If you're a rental property owner or an aspiring investor, here are eight rental documents you should always have on hand. So it's no surprise that being a landlord can be a daunting task. Mm -hmm. uh, we've all heard some sort of horror stories. Yes. We have some of our own. <laughs> um, but it doesn't have to be that way. Like in many other areas of life, if you have good documentation, yeah. you can certainly succeed at this as well. Um, so today we're going to go over eight key documents that we recommend you always have on hand. The first one being the tenant's rental application. Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, you definitely want to have them fill out an application. There, they're going to fill out key pieces of information like um, their place of employment, in case of emergency numbers, formal landlords and their contact information. And I know I personally, you probably have as well, had to reference back um, yeah. to those rental applications at some point in time. Um, so that is a critical piece that you should have in your files. Yeah, on the application, again, it also has proof of income, a lot of times what they make. I oftentimes ask the make and model of their cars yep. to like get that information as well. Um, so lots of key information. Uh, once you get that rental application, make sure to keep it, put it in your file. All right, the second document you want to keep in your file for each and every adult living in the residence are the tenant screening documents. Hopefully you're, you're screening your tenants out there, but those documents include proof of income, uh, maybe tax returns in some cases, um, any eviction or criminal background reports, and also the credit reports. So a lot of key documentation that you want to not only get from the tenants, but keep in your file. What's the next document they should keep? Uh, so the next one, it seems like a no-brainer, but the lease or rental agreement. Mm. So it could be a lease for a fixed period of time, six to 12 months, or a month-to-month -month rental agreement. Um, either way, that is a very, very important piece of information. Yeah. And along with that, I'm just going to say there's an abundance of addendums that you should have as well. Yeah. Here in the state of California, um, there are some that are required, and then there's a plethora of them that are recommended as well. Um, again, to really protect yourself as a landlord, you want to make sure that you cover all bases. So always make sure you have the lease agreement and the addendums that the tenant signed um, in a file and really scanned and saved electronically as well would apply. All right, the fourth document you definitely want to keep is a pet policy. Now it is one of those addendums Julie was mentioning to the lease agreement and the pet policy is uh, one you definitely need because it spells out how much the pet deposit is, uh, what type of animals are at the property, um, do you have a one lump deposit or one for each animal? So all sorts of things are spelled out within that pet agreement. Okay, number five is a very important one. It is a move-in checklist. Mm, yeah. um, and just to enhance this, I mean, the move-in checklist is going to kind of go room by room in the property. Yeah. Um, if there was anything that was new, you know, renovated before the tenant moved in, that can be documented. New appliances, new interior paint, new blinds, that type of a thing. Mm -hmm. Photos are always good. We yeah. can't uh, <laughs> encourage that enough. And, you know, this is really to be fair and it's for optimal practice for both the landlord and the tenant because yeah. this move-in checklist will be referenced someday when they move out. So you want to make a note of what the condition was of the rental property as they received it. Now on the move-in checklist, it's important that both the landlord and the tenant acknowledge the condition of yes. the property yeah. uh, when uh, they move in. So there's no discrepancies of, of maybe only the landlord filling the, this document out. Next on the list of the documents you want to keep is any lease renewal paperwork. So if the tenant uh, renewed the lease, maybe there was a rental increase mm -hmm. or uh, you re-signed them on the next uh, another year's lease and you bumped the rent a little bit. Uh, those are documents you definitely want to keep. Pretty self-explanatory, yeah. but uh, oftentimes those uh, notices will go missing. So yeah. what do we have next? Um, so next we have communication with tenants, mm. any sort of communication. So um, really keeping emails, any written letters, things of that nature. Um, again, it's no surprise that sometimes um, problems arise and yeah, there's disputes happen. over things. Um, whether it's an extreme case where you end up evicting a tenant and you're in court or it's just mm. something that you're trying to work out through mediation or just amongst yourselves. Um, having documented communication is really important because things can be misconstrued. Um, if they were clearly stated in a letter or an email, something like mm -hmm. that, that will definitely come in handy at some point in time. And lastly, number eight on the list is the move out checklist. So we previously had the move in checklist where the tenant and the landlord agreed to the condition of the property. Uh, now's the time to use the move out checklist. 
uh, to maybe go over any repairs that need to be done, who's at fault, is it wear and tear, or is it actually things that the tenant uh, had broken. So uh, this is a very, very important document to uh, have in case there's any sort of litigation between the tenant and the landlord and it happens to go to, to the court. Yeah, so it may come as no surprise, but the most disputed things um, in a landlord-tenant relationship is over the security deposit. Yeah, so um, again, just having very, very thorough documentation mm. and photos, ideally, um, at the beginning of the tenancy and at the end, end of the tenancy will be um, very helpful. There are life expectancies for mm. things, too. So if you have a very long-term tenant, um, they cannot be charged for certain things. I mean, flooring and paint on the walls, for example, they have a life expectancy. So. Um, move in and move out checklists are both very important. It sounds like you've done this a few times. I've done it a lot, yeah. All right. So those are the top eight documents that you want to keep as a landlord. Uh, which ones did we miss? Are there any others that you keep? Comment down below and let us know. And if you want to see more of our Did You Know show, it comes out each and every Tuesday. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. We'd love to see you as a subscriber. Thanks for watching.